started playing because I enjoyed it. I could go with my parents uh, on the weekends to the, to the tennis club that they were members of uh, through their firm where they worked at. And they had a tennis wall there. They had loads of space to, to run around and play soccer and play catch and hide and seek and uh, have a barbecue and all these sort of grill parties we used to have in the summer there. Um, and I was uh, one of the kids hanging around and thankfully there was a lot of other children also uh, around my age that were running around as well and we would sometimes go and play tennis if there was free courts and if we got lucky we could play with our parents or play doubles with them so that's how I really got into into tennis in the first place. Uh, came the tennis lessons you know of course you get a bit more serious you learn technique you learn uh, you have group trainings, you have private lessons, you know, where it's very technical. And, uh, and then I played my first tournament when I was eight years old. The style of my play, I think, it comes from the players I used to admire, you know, Boris Becker, Stefan Edberg, Pete Sampras. They all play in a way similar, yet they had their very much their own style. And what sticks out maybe is they all had a one-handed backhand. So that's maybe why I have a one-handed backhand today, I would believe, is because they had one. And they were the Wimbledon champions at the time. They were uh, maybe the number one in the world. You know, There was, of course, the Jim Couriers and Andre Agassiz and the other double handed great double handers we knew from the time. But I think that inspired me to play the way I played. The problem then was, obviously, sometimes you always have a, a too heavy of a racket. Um, for me, it was very difficult to come over the balls. I always used to chip it, and that didn't bother me too much because uh, that made me play a little bit like Edberg and Becker and Sampras in the process because they used to slice a lot uh, way back when, when the courts were very fast and the slice was a shot that was, was used a lot. Um, so I think uh, that inspired me to play the way I played then. And then as you evolve and you become stronger and you want to now improve, you know, the, the backhand and be able to come over it and you realize the sort of the moon balling that happens a lot uh, when you're playing the juniors um, with the slice, there's nothing you can do. You can't hurt your opponent, you know, but it made me maybe understand all oh, my overall game. I have to come to the net. I have to try to finish. I have to try to take chances. And the good thing is about my dad, he always told me, you know, go for the shot, hit, try to hit a winner, don't just try to make shots. And I think that then got, you know, sort of got, came into my DNA and like I realized I'm a risk taker, I'm a shot maker, um, I uh, have variation in my game, and then you sort of build from then on. My parents had asked me if I should or wanted to join the National Tennis Center. And I was like, no, 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 no. I love being in Basel. I have everything I need here. I have a great coach, uh, um, good other kids I can practice with, uh, going to school here, everything's great. And then um, the Swiss Nationals came around, uh, I think the outdoors. And I had an interview I did for the Swiss, uh, uh, so a te ten a Swiss tennis magazine. And somebody asked me could, if I could imagine, you know, going to, the, to join the Federation and, and play there and go live there full time. And I'm like, well, yeah, actually I could. My parents read the piece and they're like, but you told us like six months ago, you're not interested. And I'm like, well, I guess I've changed my, changed my opinion. So they're like, okay, well, let's look at it then. Like, what's the positive if you go there and what's the negative to go there? And we put it all in the mix. And it, to me, it seemed like there was more positives than negatives. And if my dream was really to become a professional tennis player, maybe I felt I should do it. Even though I was, had a great setup in, in Basel in, at home, and uh, then when I went, uh, it was very exciting, scary in some ways, because I was only 14 years old and I was in a foster family from Monday to Fridays and only came home on the weekends. And I remember, you know, crying in, on the train on, on Sunday night at six o'clock um, when I had to go to, to Ecu Blanc and, uh, and I knew I was not going to see my family for, you know, for five days. And then I came back on Friday. I was so happy finally when I could leave again. So the first six months were, were, were pretty brutal, actually. I'm not sure if my goal was to play pretty or play beautiful, you know. Um, I wanted to win. I want, I'm a winner and that, uh, that's what the purpose is if I play tennis, is I go out there and I play good tennis and I try to entertain the crowd, you know. Now, that it might look beautiful to some, I think that can, comes from having a one-handed backhand. I, I just believe one-handed backhands look smoother, they look a bit easier on the eye, you know. Um, but I think I was able to play the way I play today because of my fitness, because of, of my physical efforts I've put into it. And I, I, I wasn't, I could not believe the balls I would be able to, to catch 
you know, on the court through fitness. And I feel like that connected everything. The moment I became physically strong, um, I would get to balls I didn't know I could get to. And then with my talent and my hand-eye coordination and my technique, I was able to pull off shots I never thought I could. And I think this is when it, when it got really a lot of fun for me. That's when tennis went into overdrive, I believe. So, um, and then did I ever really try to play nice tennis, good-looking tennis? I don't think so. I think it just kind of happened, and I tried to look how, how did Sampras serve, you know, how did uh, Edberg volley, um, but I always told myself I cannot copy them because that's what made them so unique. So if you copy them, you will be made, you probably won't be as good as them because that came natural for them. So you have to find your own identity and do it your way, but you can look at them, what they did so good, and maybe use that for your technique or for your, for your game, and I think I did that very well.